There's a disconcerting trend of post-apocalyptic media this decade. Stories about what happens to us and or our planet when a few powerful people destroy everything for everyone. This is one such story of a corporation destroying the planet and mutated animals fighting over what's left. This is Biomutant for the Nintendo Switch. In a similar but arguably more twisted tale to Planet of the Apes, the pollution on Earth has forced humanity to abandon the planet. But in our wake, all the animals mutated from the toxic and nuclear waste to become anthropomorphic creatures building their own societies and fighting for survival with a lot of Mad Max theming. Just a lot more water. Playing as a young mutant whose look and attributes you customize, it's up to you to restore peace by uniting the various tribes to save the Tree of Life from the monstrous world eaters. That is, if you choose the path of light. If you choose the path of darkness, your game changes pretty significantly to reflect a warrior going on a selfish journey of seizing power in this newly evolved world. It's a pretty deep story with a lot of its own lore that could easily be expanded into a show or comic book series. It takes a bit of time to know exactly what the story is, but it moves at a good pace once it really gets going. Now this game was originally released in 2021 on the PS4 and Xbox One, then in 2022 on the PS5 and Xbox Series X. So it does have noticeable downgrades on the older, less powerful Switch. While the open world action adventure game does run well and features good animation, the HD polish isn't quite as clean. Also textures are kind of muddy and character models tend to look a bit last gen. But thankfully the visuals aren't so bad to take away from the gameplay experience. For sound, some interesting choices were made for better and for worse. The voice acting from the animals is all sounds that kind of sound like a made-up language, but then they're always interpreted by this one English-speaking narrator. It gives the game a sort of nature documentary feel to it, like us humans are watching what has become of Earth since we abandoned it. The sound effects are all pretty good with decent impact for the combat, but I wasn't thrilled with the music. There's a lot of slow, dramatic music as you play that stays pretty much the same no matter where you go. At first it did great at delivering the emotion of this wasteland that was once Earth, but after a while there were times the music almost put me to sleep. I had to find a bad guy to fight just to wake me up. It's pretty disappointing because the epic feel and scale the game could have had is largely held back by its boring music. Thankfully more effort seems to have been put into the combat, as Biomutant sports a well-varied combat system that lets you mix guns with melee weapons like swords allowing you to switch between the two at any time simply by pressing the button for melee and right trigger for gun. It's to the point where you can use ranged and melee attacks together in combos along with parrying attacks, jumping, and dodging from side to side. Sure, a Zelda-style Z-targeting system would have been nice, but I didn't find myself needing it that much. Naturally, a game with such a combat system has an RPG level-up system to boost your stats as you earn XP. You always have to bear in mind, though, what area you're currently struggling in the most. Maybe you've gotten comfortable with your strength, so you want to upgrade your intellect to have an easier time with these matching puzzles you encounter. Or you want to find more valuables when you go digging around, so you level up your luck. Interestingly, this is about boosting stats that you adjusted the balance of at the start of the game. But you're doing a lot more than this in your character menu screen from points. You're also unlocking and customizing other aspects using objects you collect as you fight and explore. For one, you use Psi Energy and Bio Points to unlock special Psychic Powers and Mutant Powers, which you can hold up to four of at a time. Like this Fire Stream that lets you move fast while burning the whole area in the process. Great for dealing with larger enemy groups. You can also access the crafting menu to take parts you found and equip them to your weapons for a temporary damage boost from something like Ice Bullets. Or with the right amount of each needed resource, you can actually craft all new weapons and clothes to beef up your strength and defense. This all culminates into fun fights against a surprisingly good variety of enemies and some really challenging boss fights. All this is done in a big open world. Now it may have been too ambitious for the developers to render a whole country, let alone a badly destroyed planet, but the open world you do get to run around in does a great job of representing what the world at large has become. Thankfully, the world's massive size is balanced out by a simple fast travel system, but this system is rather picky. There are too many times I would open up my map to fast travel somewhere, but it would tell me I couldn't fast travel from where I currently was, even though I was outside and at high elevation. That just didn't make sense to me. But fortunately, to get around faster, you can ride a horse just like Zelda. It's pretty easy to call him over, too. But you also ride other creatures and mechs to get around faster or explore a hazardous environment. I gotta say though, I loved being able to shoot at enemies while on horseback. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption has this too, but not with a machine gun. That being said, there is a good variety in the different areas of this open world, with the standouts being the ones that have some kind of environmental hazard that you have to address. 
either by finding the right suits via side quests to protect you from said hazards, using a mech, or boosting your tolerance to those hazards with points. It seems to be a game that borrowed a big element from recent Zelda games, but it's slightly expanded from that inspiration, and it makes perfect sense given the theme of a planet destroyed by pollution. But to be fair, I may have expected such gameplay mechanics as soon as I found out what the backstory was. What I didn't expect was a game that puts so much emphasis on choices. How those choices reflect your character's soul. Are you light or dark? Good or evil? Selfless or selfish? Are you someone who feels unity is the best approach? Or do you think one tribe should decimate all others? The choices you make, mainly in dialogue scenes, do affect how the story progresses and to a certain extent how you unlock your psychic powers. It's a pretty interesting concept. Also watching the light and dark angel and demon argue as you make your choices is pretty entertaining by itself. While this is a very imaginative action-adventure game, I suggest renting it rather than shell out the $40 a new copy costs. It is worth playing if you love open-world action-adventure games and you may like it enough to actually buy it. But its underwhelming aspects, mainly its mediocre presentation, are what lead me to recommend a rental instead of just buying it outright. Well that's my review of Biomutants for the Nintendo Switch. Tell me to produce more videos like this, Please support my Patreon page. Special thanks to my current patrons here. Remember that supporting my Patreon gets the name of the credits and access to my main videos a day early. Also be sure to watch my previous reviews of these other action-adventure games on the Switch. Legend of K Anniversary and Another Crab's Treasure. See you all next time! Who would have guessed it would go down with a throw-up? Could it really get any better than that?